Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about replacing the FEP film on your resin printer. I have the Elegue uh, Saturn 3, a great printer, but every now and then I have to replace the FEP film and it is quite a tedious task. It is very easy to do. There's nothing special about it. It's very easy and I'll walk you through the whole process. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring and just being and supporting this channel, helping me to grow and to do more with this channel. Okay, so before we get started, uh, just make sure that you have safety gear on here. We don't want resin on your hands. It's, it's really messy and sticky. Let's get going with replacing this fab form. It is not a difficult task. Uh, you know, one of the funny things about replacing this fab form is that I've got a drum here. What happened with this FEP film is that it got uh, it got broken. It got a little hole through it. There was a bit of uh, plastic that had fallen off and it created a hole in it and it started to leak. So now I need to replace it and it's not a difficult task. Elegoo provide you with, with all of the three Allen keys that you need because you need three different sizes. So let's just pop that out of the bag here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an electric screwdriver because trust me, this gets tedious going again and again and again. Anyway, let's get started. And we're going to be using three different size Allen keys to get the screws out. And there are a lot of screws. I'm using my Wham Bam shield here. This here protects my workspace from, from, uh, from all the resin from these, these prints. And these, this is great. This Wham Bam uh, silicon is an absolute must if you have a resin printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this step by step. So there are four bolts here that, that hold the fit film down and they align up with your printer on my Elegoo in any way they do. So if you have something slightly different, don't worry about it. We just basically want to get the screws, all of the screws out here. So the first one I usually do are these big nice ones with a nice big head on it to hold it in place and we're just going to pop those off. I might speed up some sections here because there's something like, I can't remember what it was like, something like 40 screws that you've got to take out of this, out of this specific one. Right, so we got those four out, so then we go to the next step which is taking these bigger ones out. So how this works is you've got the bigger ones on this side and then there's some smaller ones on the other side holding a plate down. So these ones actually do your your tensioning of your FEP film. I've got some NFEP film here from Soraya Tech that I'm going to be replacing with, not FEP or whatever it's called. And I've, let me turn this over for a second. And the reverberation is driving me nuts. What I've got here is it came with this, this hard plastic here and then the FEP film inside this plastic. I, like a total moron, was having a look at this and thinking, how the heck is this going to tension up on here? This is so thick. This can't be right. And after a little while of looking at it and realizing I'm a puckler, uh, <laughs> this is not the fair form, if fair form is inside here, I then spent another age trying to find the, the plastic film that was on here, the protective film. There's no protective film on here to take off. So again, I tried for ages to try to find it. I was using knife blades and knife edges, and I really struggled to find it. But eventually I figured out that there is no protective sheet on this specific one. There are some that come with a protective sheet on, so make sure there is no protective sheet because that needs to be peeled off once you start using the, the other tools you might need are a exacto knife with a nice sharp blade. Uh, what I've done to punch the holes through the fair form is I've used this screwdriver bit with a very, very small, uh, thin little flat screwdriver bit on it because I find that that works better than the exacto knife. The exacto knife can cause a cut which could cause a tear. So I prefer to use this, but you could use this just to puncture a small hole, which I'll demonstrate shortly. That's it for the tools that we are going to require. We're now going to loosen all the bolts the whole way around, the big ones. Okay, so I'm just going to take these and just loosen them a little bit, and then I'll use my nice electric screwdriver to, to take them out. That electric screwdriver is so nice to use. I love using it. It is so much easier than using 
and Allen key. So really worthwhile to buy one of those. Um, I use it all over my workshop and it is an absolute amazing tool. I truly enjoy using it. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen all of these bolts because the electric screwdriver, we don't wanna put too much tension onto it. Right, now we're gonna start. So we've already taken four bolts out and now we are going to take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 16 bolts so far. All right, I'm just going to take these all out. As I, as you can see, the electric screwdriver is such a, a, a beaut to use. I absolutely love using it. You know, I'm... I am a fan of, of um, FDM printing. FDM printing is, is quick, simple, and easy to use. There's no mess, no fuss. But recently, I got commissioned to print out some really strong, intricate parts. And again, resin printing is not associated with really strong. But if you use the right material, I found some Sunlu nylon-like uh, resin. And that stuff is so strong. Uh, a friend of mine bought a Prusa and we, I printed up a whole bunch of parts for him on the resin printer for a new head and a new way he wants to lay things out. And it came out so gorgeously. Oh my goodness, those parts. I'll try to post some pictures here of those parts. They came out so beautiful. So there is a place for resin printing. Resin printing is a mess. It is a very messy process to use. And there's a lot of cleaning up that you got to do afterwards on the parts and on the machine. Um, I don't use it enough to leave resin in the machine. So every now and then I'm sitting taking resin out and it is, it is a pain. So, you know, I do find a use for it, but it's not an often use. And unfortunately also with the FEP film, that is also a problem because every time you damage that, you have to replace it. So anyway, there we go. We've got that part off and we can set that aside. Let's have a look at this. Now I've got... You can see that it is relatively loose because what happens is those bolts around there will tension it. These ones here are just to hold the plastic in place. So that's already 16 plus another 28 screws that need to come out here. So what does that give me a running total of the 44 bolts already? All right, what I'm going to do now, now we need another Allen key size. I'm just going to grab that. How do you like my holder for my uh, electric screwdriver that I designed? Absolutely amazing. It goes into the Gridfinity system and I love it. I love it. All right, let's just loosen all of these first. I'm just gonna do a half a turn. Let's try it with the electric screwdriver. Ah, oh, that works perfect. So I don't need to loosen it. So now I'm gonna take all of these out. All right. Just gonna fast forward through this because this is going to take a while. There's quite a number of screws here, as I said. Now that we have all our screws out, it's relatively simple. We just pop the two parts apart. You see that there are two parts here and we pop them apart. Take our old fab form out and discard that. So then I'm gonna get rid of. Just throw it down there for now, all right. I'm just gonna go off camera and get rid of some of the excess resin that's on this just to clean it up. I don't wanna do it in here because I don't have a mask or anything like that. I wanna do it outside, fresh air and safe. I'll be back shortly. Right, I'm back. I've cleaned up these with isopropyl alcohol, chipped off some of the, the harder parts, replaced my gloves so that they're nice and clean. And let's get going with the second half of this. This is really, as I say, it's super easy. Uh, just need to follow the process properly. Now you want to make sure that your, your, uh, your frame here is in the right orientation. How you would do that is you can see where the indented parts of the screw, this is flat, that's indented, that's the top. And the same with this, that part is indented, we want that on the bottom like that. We're going to take our new FEP, FEP film, take it out of here nice and clean, right, nice and clean like that. And now all I do, as you can see, is I'm just placing it on top like that, and then we're going to place this frame on top here. There's no pre-tensioning or anything like this. Now, when we get to this part, we can now screw all our screws in. I like to do cross screws, but on this point of the process, it's not 
sort of absolutely necess necessity to do it as a cross hatch, but I like to do it. It provides tension on each side like this. Then you provide tension on each side like that, and then you hear and you, you narrow in, so your tension is equally put on, so you don't over tighten this screw, and then this one doesn't go in all the way. Now, <clears throat> what I wanna do is I just wanna put four screws in just to hold it in place. So I'm gonna use this. You can use an X-Acto knife, you can take your X-Acto knife and poke a hole, but I'm gonna use this screwdriver because this works really well for it. I'm just gonna put four holes. Well, I'm actually just gonna put one. Screw that in place. Make sure it's nice and lined up so that everything is lined up. Where's my button? Right, there we go. First screw in. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side over here, as you can see on the top here, so that it's opposite to this one. I'm going to poke a hole and a line. Get that lined up. I'll just poke a hole with that, and then we take another screw and we pop that in. This actually does tighten up quite nice and tight. So that's one. Then I'm going to go to this side, pop a hole and pop a hole. And we'll put those two screws in. Now that we've got everything lined up, we can then go and pop all the other holes. Right, there's that screw in. And then I'm going to go to the opposite corner and get that nicely tightened down. Right, Oop, that didn't tighten. Let's get that tight. Right, there we go. So now I've got my sheet in here and it's not ultra tight, but it is nicely placed inside here. Now I'm going to go and proceed to put holes in on, on all the screw holes and then we're going to screw them in. So let's go and do that quickly. There we go, all the way around. And now I'm going to put all the screws in. We'll run through this a quick time lapse to show it. But you'll notice that I will cross, crisscross as we go across here. So I'll put that one in last. I'll put that one in next. Take your time with this. Make sure that you don't damage the middle part here and get something stuck inside there. Take your time with this and we'll just work our way all the way around, screwing everything in nice and tight. Just don't take your time. Don't rush this. The crisscrossy method is not 100% needed on this part, but it's something that you know, from the automotive industry where it came, where you want to tighten up your engine block, you want to just do crisscross tightening up, and I prefer doing it that way. So I'm just going to do continually doing this crisscross method. It's not, as I say, vital, but it does help. Once we've got all of those in place, we can flip this over. Let's get that out, and we've got our, our board. It's not that tight. Let's take our base, and we're gonna take this. Let's just clean that off. Right. Just be careful with, your, with this process, do it slowly. You don't wanna rush this. Okay, I'm now going to poke the hole through. The first ones I want to put through are these four corner posts, the ones that hold it, because that'll just tighten it up from the sides really nicely. So let's just line those up. Let's be careful. And then we want to screw this in through our hole. There we go. I'm not going to over tighten. I'm going to do this one with the Allen key, because I don't want to go and grab the other bit. Just lightly tighten it, not too tight. So I don't want to over tighten these right now. I just want to get them to bite in place. There we go. That one's bit. And I'm going to put these four in nice and slowly so we don't damage anything. I've got these four now holding in place. Now I'm going to tighten crisscross. So I'm just going to tighten this one turn and then do the same on this so that we evenly tighten everything up. I'm going to come across to this one. Tighten that one turn, and this one, tighten one turn. This will evenly distribute our tightening across the whole board. So I'm going to come back to this one. We'll do one more. Same one here. I can already hear the tension growing. There it is there. Then we come here. 
one more, and then this one, and one more. Now we go back to here, and we just keep doing this until we tight. We're getting there. One there, one turn there, one turn there with the crisscrossing method, and one there. And then the final. I'm going to leave it at that and I'll tighten up the rest at the end of this process. All right, now we are going to take this and poke the rest of our holes. Nice and carefully and slowly so we don't do something silly. And also these two. These two are the bolts that go through. So we want to just get a nice proper push through there. Whoopsie. I'm going to push all the way through with that one just to clean out the hole nicely. Like that. There we go. Nice and clean. Right. Let's put the rest in. Not going to over tighten it. I just want to put it in place and tighten it up until... Now we've got this excess plastic here, we're going to trim that off. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and trim that off. I'm going to go around and just tighten up all of these. Don't over tighten and make sure it's tight enough. Take it slow so you don't damage anything or break anything. We don't want to tighten it all the way. We just want to incrementally tighten it one step at a time as we're going across, crisscross. We're just pulling this. It stretches the FEP as we go along and we get a beautiful tight drum. I'm going to go around one more time, fully tighten everything up, and then we are done. Ah, let's tap it. Beautiful drum sound, nice and tight. Everything is good. Everything is in place. That is it. Just take your time. Be careful. These FIP films are expensive. I don't know why they are so expensive. The only reason they are so expensive is because we need them for, for these 3D printers. Just want to again thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Let's have a quick message from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you're into electronics and PCB projects, PCBWay is the place to go. They offer high quality PCB prototyping and assembly services. But that's not all. PCBWay also provides precise CNC machining services. And for those innovative 3D printing projects, their 3D printing services have got you covered too. Fast turnaround time, excellent customer support, and all at an affordable price. Check them out at PCBWay.com and take your projects to the next level. Yeah, PCBWay is a fantastic service. I really enjoy their products and what they deliver. I'll shortly do a video on one of their products that they've delivered to me. Really great to do PC board design, to do 3D printing. Really an amazing group. Guys, that's it. If you have any questions, please post it down in the comments below. Just give us a like and subscribe. And thank you for watching the channel. Really enjoyed doing this video for you and I needed to get it done. So I'm pleased that that is now out of the way. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. God bless and stay safe.